Hi guys, this is Connie, back for some more Connie Reads The Lawn Boy, Ret the Lawn Boy Returns. Words. We are on chapter six. Brains good. Brawn sometimes better. <laughs> That's the title. Here we go. Joey and Rock and I enjoyed a silent ride to the auditorium downtown. Joey dropped me off at the VIP door and I flashed my sponsor's badge at the guard. Joey and Rock drove around the back entrance to the locker room. I spotted Grandma near the ring right away. I wish I'd worn sunglasses. She was chatting with Arnold, Kenny, and Alan. They're not shy, but they were looking at the, they were all looking at the ground while they talked with her. The glare from her head was too much for them. Savannah, Gib, Frank, and Lindy huddled together, each of them frantically thumb typing on their blackberries. Were they tending to uh, my empire even during a social event? That was good, because I was taking the evening off to enjoy the fight. I turned around and saw Pasquale, Louis, Louis, and Benny, who'd started working for us a week before and was fast becoming indispensable, and their wives. Behind them were about 12 guys from the yard crew. We all high-fived each other. We took our seats in the sponsor's box, which was the two front rows behind Joey's corner of the ring. Kenny and Alan almost lost their minds when Arnold told them that the concession food was free to my guest. They ordered one of everything. I was too nervous to eat. I kept remembering how sad Joey had been when he talked about the fight earlier that day. I'm new to the prize fighting game, but there was something about that look in his eye that worried me. After what felt like forever, the house lights went down and an announcer's voice boomed through the auditorium, introducing the two fighters who entered the arena from the locker rooms on opposite sides. In one spotlight, I saw Joey in his red robe and trunks. He was dragging Rock after him. Zed swaggered behind, bringing up the rear. Zed. I felt a nasty chill run up my spine. Why did I get such a bad feeling from this guy? Besides the fact that he was a dirty lying mooch, of course. I ran over to the corner and shouted in Joey's ear over the roar of the crowd. What's Zed doing here? While I fight, Zed and Rock can supervise each other. This guy. The audience booed and cheered as Bruiser Bulk climbed into the ring. He looked like he'd seen, he looked like he'd been carved from stone, tattooed stone. He moved slowly around his corner, muscles rippling on his body where I hadn't known muscles existed. He made his first and middle fingers into a V and pointed first at his own eyes and then at Joey, as if to say, I see you. I see you and I'm going to eat you for breakfast. Joey didn't notice. He was waving at Grandma. The introductions of the fighters. In this corner wearing black trumps, trunks, the upper Miss Midwest heavyweight champ, Bruiser Buck. And in the opposite corner, his opponent wearing red trunks, Joey Pow took longer than the actual fight. One right roundhouse, one left uppercut, one right punch in the face that made an ugly splat. Four and a half seconds. Three lightning fast blows followed by a thunk as Bruiser Bulk hit the canvas. Joey Pow worked so fast that I hadn't even gotten back to my seat. I was still standing near his corner of the ring, between Rock, who looked worried, and Zed, who looked furious. The ref knelt next to Bruiser, counting to nine, and checking to make sure he was breathing. When the ref got to nine, he leaped up, grabbed Joey's arm, and raised it above their heads. The new upper Midwest heavyweight champion, Joey Pow! I'd have gone with Joey Pow, but it still sounded good. Alan and Kenny were Alan and Kenny were jumping up and down, screaming, making it snow popcorn. Grandma was standing on her chair, howling like a wolf, and Arnold was smiling and shaking his hands with or shaking hands with everyone in his vicinity. Savannah, Gib, Frank, and Lindy were texting like someone's life depended on it. Zed went flying out of the auditorium. Rock hot in his heels. Before I could even think about following them to see what was going on, Joey rumbled over to hug me and squeezed so hard I felt some of my ribs mew move. 
Excuse me, Joey Powell? A woman interrupted our celebration. She was holding a microphone. A guy carrying a television camera on his shoulder stood behind her. I'm Sandra Santana, sports reporter from Action News 7. We'd like to interview you. Hello, I'm Joey Powell. I'm beating all my opponents in four and a half seconds. It's because I wear the red trunks my sponsor says are good luck. This is my sponsor. You? Sandra Santana raised her eyebrows and turned the mic to me. A blinding light atop the camera flashed on. Between Grandma's hair and the TV lights, I'd be seeing flashing, swirling dots in front of my eyes for years. And that's the end of chapter six. Be careful with that and enjoy. Please and thank you. And I will see you for the next installment. Have a good one. Bye.